Okay. Think we're going live. Think we've gone live. There's always a couple of seconds delay whenever I go live on the um, the OBS thing. So, uh, right. Can everybody hear me, first of all? <laughs> Am I coming through? Who's joined? Ah, oh, Philly Dog, hello. Omar Zambon, always nice to see you. Lorenzo Granger, always nice to see you as well. Tom Locke, hello. Neil Henderson, hello. The British Comedy Wizard. That's a good name. Hello. <laughs> right, I'm coming in okay. Great. That's good. Uh, well, thanks for joining, folks. Uh, once again... The Futurist is here! Oh my god. Hello, TF. TF exclamation mark. Uh, Damien Fenton, hello. Mark Sheridan. Ben. Great. Okay. Tim Rayner, hello. Okay. Well, uh, yeah. We're going to be opening some James Bond trading cards tonight. We are going to be liberating uh, cards from this pack from... 2019, this, uh, Upper Deck Collection. Uh, now, I'm assuming, I'm hoping, <laughs> that there's gonna be some autograph cards in here. I've had a look online at, so, at like, what we can expect, uh, from this. Uh, the base set of cards are, like, character cards, so you've got Harold Scarter as Odd Job, James Bonds, obviously, um, you know, they, they have a whole bunch of characters. Uh, and then there's a gold acetate set, which is kind of like the character cards, but gold acetate. Uh, and then we have autograph cards, which is obviously the most exciting thing about this. Uh, the prospect of having Judy Dench's autograph, for instance. Um, but obviously she's one of the rarer ones. Uh, this website very helpfully <laughs> sort of gives you the odds. Um... The odds of us getting Jeffrey Wright as Felix Leiter, for instance, are 1 in 1,020. Um, so I won't be uh, expecting Jeffrey Wright's autograph to be in here. But, you know, you can get Anthony Stark, who's Truman Lodge in License to Kill, Mariam Darbo, uh, obviously Kara from The Living Daylights, Ben Wishaw as Q, uh, Carol Ashby from um, A View to a Kill, Caroline Bliss, uh, Michael Madsen, Famke Janssen, which would be really cool, George Lazenby, Isabella Skorupko. Now, that would be... Isab uh, obviously, Natalia from Goldeneye, that would be a very cool one. Judy Dench... Your own Crabbe, Lois Childs, that would be another great one, Lynn Holly Johnson, Michael Kitchen, um, Colin Salmon, Denise Richards. Like, if we get Denise Richards, then I, I, I don't know what I'll do. Uh, I'll have to think of something. Um, but then you can also get some autograph inscriptions, apparently, which are, like, autographs by the actors with their character name in quotes, like, also written down, which seems a little odd. Um, ooh, Mark Sheridan, good question, the most common one to get. Well, there are several that are, according to this site that I'm on, um, there are, so, the odds for some are 1 in 10. It can't be 1 in 10, surely. Um, anyway, some of the, some of the more, uh, common ones, let's say, uh, included in that. Oh, well, Michael Kitchen, um, Nadim Suwala, who's Fakesh in, um, Spy Loved Me, Colin Salmon, uh, Shane Rimmer, Tanya Mallet, Tilly Masterson from Goldfinger. That's pretty cool. Um, and just to get you up to speed, obviously, if you didn't tune in for the last time we opened some cards, these were the Prime cards of the evening. Marilyn Goldsworthy's autograph from The Spy Who Loved Me, and Albert Moses from uh, Octopussy, who clearly had issues uh, writing his name. I guess his biro started to run out or something. Um, but the thing that did get me most excited from that particular deck was uh, a little sliver of the Russian nuclear bunker suit from uh, The World Is Not Enough. So that was uh, that. That was great. Um, Cheers, everyone. Happy uh, Sunday evening. I'm off work tomorrow, so I get to drink tonight. <laughs> Which is obviously my usual Jack Daniels and Diet Coke, obviously. Um, right. <laughs> Mr. Tom Tony, I do hope these cards are science fact cards, yeah. <laughs> Could be broccoli certified science fact cards. Okay, let's get into this. 
Philly Dog, this is my first time being in your live streams. Well, welcome. Thank you. I, I hope you enjoy. Um, right. So this is completely sealed, has never been opened before. Oh. I got a real rush the last time I talked a bit about this. I used to collect Pokemon cards when I was a kid, <laughs> and um, did get a bit of a rush out of uh, opening these foil cards again. All right, there we go, folks. To the side. Uh, now, how do we get in here? Ah, there's a thing. Ah, the Celestial Toy Gazer. Welcome as well. Shoulder Shot, hello. George Pryor, hello. Oh, Nick W, you have Mie Hama's autograph card. That's really cool. From, um, You Only Live Twice, of course. Oh, Brad Wood, I am always on the lookout for new video ideas, so... Oh, that come off very well. Dolly cards with or without the braces. <laughs> Alright, here we go. And there we are. Upper deck. Alright, I'm just gonna do this like you would see it in the shop. If you were to. Have you ever actually seen these cards out in the wild? Because I must say, I don't think I ever have. I've completely balls this up. Is that supposed to go like that? Right, well, anyway. <laughs> um, put these here. And we shall get tucked in. Okay, how many are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I think we've got like 20 packs here. This will keep us going for a while. And yes, indeed, wrapped in gold, Mikey. <laughs> All right. Shall we open the first pack? I think... I remember the last time, like, I, I remember, like, it was, like, two packs in uh, in a row, I think, that I got those previous autograph ones. I do wonder if they're going to be a bit more spaced out here. Ooh, I do see Lois Childs in there, Moonraker. But is it an autograph or is it a character card? We shall see. Oh, okay, we have Cigar Girl, Stamper, oh, Roger Moore as James Bond in Moonraker, that's pretty cool. Oh, Q Branch card, the Ski Pole Rocket Launcher from The Spy Who Loved Me. Oh, that's very nice. Hmm, right. Charles Robinson from Tomorrow Never Dies. And Dr. Holly Goodhead from Moonraker. Excellent. Okay. That's a really nice Roger Moore as James Bond. Right, okay. I think I will put base ones there. We'll keep a... We might demote some of these depending on if we get some more um, interesting cards. Uh... <laughs> I'm getting flashbacks to Panini sticker packs. I do not know Panini sticker packs. Alright, okay, I see Carol Ashby there from A View to a Kill. But first, we have Valentin Zukovsky from The World Is Not Enough. Cameron Shah from The Living Daylights. Max Zorin from A View to a Kill. On black there. Ooh, what's this? Bond villains. James Bond and Dr. No in Dr. No. Oh, that's cool. I'm already digging how much more variety there is in this particular uh, assortment of cards than the previous one. Oh, Mr. Ling from Goldfinger. And, oh, Dominique. You know, I don't know if I knew that that was her name. I always just called her the Butterfly Girl. Oh, that's strange. Hmm, oh, very good. Oh, Zachary Antle, thank you very much. A video essay on Peter and his editing innovations would be cool. I think he's kind of an underappreciated figure in greater film-making talk. Well, I quite agree. I really enjoyed... I saw um, he directed Roger Moore in a film called Gold. Um, I really liked that uh, film. Um, or at least the start and the end. Like, the middle bit I, I found slightly dull, but... Um... 
no, I did. Um, I did enjoy it, and you can very you could very much tell it was a Peter Hunt film, which I quite liked. Damon, hello. Is that a photo of you at the No Time to Die premiere? That's really cool. <laughs> Calvin, oh, Dylan, hi. When do you think we'll get a new Bond actor announcement? I think we're a, a long way off. Um, I'm sure we will talk about <laughs> James Bond Day at some point uh, on the live stream today. Um, but yeah, I just, I, I tend to just try to not get my hopes up too much when it comes to James Bond Day. I don't think that Eon are actually that sentimental when it comes to those kinds of things. I never really expect anything from them. Um... Anyway, uh, right. Willard White, Diamonds Are Forever. I love that, I love that Willard White has a trading card. That's awesome. Very nice. Klaus. Charles Dance from For Your Eyes Only. I did not know that that guy's name was Klaus. Oh, we have John Cleese. Q in Dine of the Day. Excellent. I, I'm actually quite impressed with these cards, you know. I think that, ooh, Hello. A red card for Paula from Thunderball. That's quite cool. Actually, I might just, yeah, I'll put these in there. Uh, that's very nice. Sheriff J.W. Pepper, Louisiana State Police. Oh, excellent. All right. I'm thrilled. Oh, brilliant. Sheriff J.W. Pepper desperately tries to keep up with James Bond as he pursues one of drug dealer Mr. Big's many henchmen. After catching up with Bond, Pepper is shocked to learn that 007 is a British agent working in conjunction with the CIA. Oh, I love that. <laughs> and we have Luigi Ferrara from Fiore's Only. These cards are really nice. Like, just to compare with what we had the last time, like... This was the base set, where it was sort of like stills from the films and told a story as they went. Which was quite nice, there were some nice stills, but in terms of like, non-base set cards, only really had a handful, which I think for a whole pack, that wasn't all that much. Um, whereas here I feel like, oh wow, yeah, no, there's a pretty good variety here. JW autographed card would be something. Secret agent on whose side? Right. Let's go on this side next. I hope Dario is in one of the packs. Well, we'll see. Oh, Zachary Antle, thank you very much again. Also, I took the On Her Majesty's titles and replaced the theme with the 60s song by the Bee Gees of all people, and it worked surprisingly well as a Bond song. Oh, that's quite cool. Those titles are really hip, actually. I think they're, they're some of the... yeah. Yeah, I do need to, um, yeah, do another, uh, title sequence ranking video at some point. Oh, hello! James Bond in The Man with the Golden Gun, a very fetching image of Sir Roger there. Oh, we have Klaus, again, from For Your Eyes Only. Oh, nice! Le Chiffre. Le Chiffre on black. Very nice. Oh! Now that is lovely. M from Skyfall. Oh, very nice. Polar Ivanova. Just looking to see. Oh, this is numbered 200. What's Polar numbered? 161. Okay, well, I don't think we'll be completing that set. <laughs> uh, what are these? Huh. Right. Polar Ivanova. And Cider? Sa Cider? Saida? From the Man with the Golden Gun. Pretty cool. I love the niche level these cards go to in terms of which characters they represent. It's very cool. Oh, Matthew Sutton, thank you. Well done, Calvin, on your completion of the John Gardner novels. I've really enjoyed your reviews. Oh, thank you. It's very kind. It's been, um, it's been a journey. Uh, but I do have... Zero minus ten, the Raymond Benson book, ready to go. But I am actually having a bit of a palate cleanser at the moment. I'm not actually reading a Bond book for the first time in however long. Um, I'm reading Moby Dick at the moment. 
Because <laughs> I thought, I've, I've read literally nothing but John Gardner books for years. And uh, I just wanted a bit of a palate cleanser. Just like, you know, enjoy something that, uh, you know, a, a, a classic that I've never read, really. And I, yeah, Moby Dick. I've, you know, read Jaws. I kind of like, you know. Um... Stories set at sea. I don't. Yeah, I don't really know why. Um, okay. Mark Sheridan, you should have a pile for most obscure character card. I like that idea. Okay, we're doing it. All right, most obscure character. I think Saida wins. Saida. Saida. Okay. I. I'm gonna rate her as the most niche character card we've had so far. Let's see if she can be beat. Uh, I think it's going well so far too, Tim. Like I say, I think this is a really nice uh, set of cards, actually. Right. No autographs yet, though. Okay, who do we have here? Japanese James Bond from You Only Live Twice. <laughs> Oh my. Excellent. I don't really know what pile to put that one in, because it's kind of a different sort of style to the others. I guess I'll pop it there. Dario! Very... Uh... Thirsty image there. <laughs> Benicio Del Toro. Uh... Bill Tanner from GoldenEye. Nice. Ooh! Ooh, is this is this one of what an acetate card? What is this? This isn't gold. Oh no, wait! Is, this isn't going to be an autograph, is it? Oh god! I was half expecting to turn it over then and see um, Michael Madsen's signature, but that's pretty cool. It's always nice when you get a shiny, right? Dominic Smith, hi and thank you very much. After you finish Moby Dick, I recommend the 1998 film adaptation starring Patrick Stewart. Ooh, I will check that out. I think so far I've only seen uh, the Gregory Peck one. Um, which which was interesting. <laughs> AJ Garrett, yes indeed, a foil. Yes, a foil card. Uh, right, okay, we have James Bond in Octopussy. And we have James Bond in License to Kill as well. God, did I get... I got three James Bonds in that. Got all those in one deck, one pack rather. All right. Okay. Oh, Tom Locke has no time to die. Moved up in your rankings. It keeps falling in mind with every watch. It hasn't moved in a while. Actually, you can head over to um, the Bond Experience uh, because David's latest video I feature in. He asked a few people to do like a one-minute uh, video about like whether or not your opinions of No Time to Die have changed, and I contributed my uh, two cents to that. Um, and yeah, it hasn't really changed for me all that much. Like, when I first saw it, it would have gone, like, slap bang in the middle, and it's sort of gone a little bit down on subsequent watchings. Um, it's in the lower half, definitely. But, um, yeah. Who knows? I think it's going to take another um, Bond actor in the role to really sort of give me some space from it, I guess. Oh, Zachary Antle again. Thank you. I'm amazed at how hip on Her Majesty's Secret Service in general is. Hunt's star was so forward-thinking and it really feels like a movie from this decade, whereas Diamonds Are Forever and The French Connection can't believe they were both from 71. I know. Yeah. Peter Hunt's style was very forward-thinking. Um... Whereas I think that some of the, like, I watched The Wild Geese earlier today for a, I'm going to be doing a review of it on the channel stars Roger Moore. And, um, yeah, it's one of those films that you kind of watch and just feel like, all right, yeah, this is, you can, you, you can see that I enjoyed it, but you can tell it is sort of like, it feels like factory line filmmaking, whereas someone like Peter Hunt is a bit more kind of avant-garde, I guess, uh. It's a pretentious term to use there, avant-garde. Uh, right, okay. Let's have a look. Oh, I see Dine of the Day. Right, okay. Now oh, my hands are just wet from picking up my drink there, the, con the condensation. Right. 
Oh, we have Boris Grishenko. Oh. <laughs> All right. Cider, you are no longer the most obscure character to be on one of these cards. We are swapping you for Imposter Double O from The Living Daylights. Carl Rigg. Wow. I, I didn't think she was going to be beat, and yet here we are. Oh, that's a nice card of M. From Rush With Love. Very nice. Lovely stuff. And we have another Q Branch card. The Glass Shattering Ring from Dine of the Day. Very nice. Gregory Beam. Quantum of Solace. And another James Bond from Dine of the Day. Excellent stuff. I am invincible. Alright. In, is it Imposter Double O or Imposter Ooh? <laughs> Very good, Gummy Bear 2. I like that. Uh, Damon, the Wild Geese is very of its time, but great. No, I, I agree. It is very of its time. Um, I didn't realise it was the same director as um, that other Roger Moore film. Um, North Sea Hijack. Folks. Go. Saunders from the Living Daylights. Manuela from Moonraker. Excellent. Ooh, Felix Leiter from Thunderball. I feel like that placement is a little like he shouldn't he be a bit further up. Maybe they didn't have any more of a still there. Ooh, a foil Tehe. Very nice. Oh, I like that. Alright. James Bond from A View to a Kill. And Quarrel. Very good. I haven't had that much uh, duplication, duplicates, uh, really. I think in the previous one I had about, like, two or three of every single base card. Here, I... Yeah, I've not, not really had that much... Uh... In terms of doubles, which is quite cool. Abdullah A, thank you very much. Have you watched The Offense starring Connery as a police detective? I haven't. But it has been on my shelf for some time. I will definitely get to it. Um, I think it'd be an interesting one to watch because it is the film that I believe that Connery made as part of that agreement that he made with um, United Artists to come back for Diamonds Are Forever, right? Like, there was a deal that he could make whatever two films he wanted or something, and they only made the one film, but I think it'd be interesting because it'd be like, oh, wow, okay, this is what Connery wanted to make. I, that'd be quite interesting. <sighs> Jaws needs to be a foil card. I quite agree. Um... I agree, Shoulder Shot. It is a little scary that we haven't got an autograph card yet, but I think we are just about halfway. So, um... Fingers crossed! Um... Because unlike the last, uh... box of cards that I opened, um... This one said that it didn't uh, necessarily uh, guarantee you an autograph card. But, uh... It said, on average, you get two a pack. So I was like, all right, well, let's hope averages are on our side. Oh, great, a, a duplicate card for uh, Japanese James Bond. <laughs> oh, another Dario. I clearly spoke too soon about the duplicates, didn't I? But that is a very nice Roger Moore from Live and Let Die. Very good. Oh, yes! Oh, I am thrilled. I am... Okay, and then we've got James Bond, and we've got uh, Columbo. Great. But, ladies and gentlemen, we have a shiny Charles Grey, a foil Charles Grey, as Ernst Stavro Blofeld. This is brilliant. Oh, I'm so pleased. I wonder what the, the difference is between... Like, how many are there? Oh, I'm so thrilled. I'm so pleased with that. That is excellent. Okay. Oh, very good. Very, very good. 
Jump to the left. <laughs> oh, David Kaplan, thank you. Thoughts on Argyle? I'm intrigued by Argyle and what's it, what's going to come from that. The um, Henry Cavill starring spy film. They certainly, they certainly gave him an interesting look for it. Um, I will be seeing it, but I don't know if I'll be seeing it at cinemas or if I maybe will wait for it to be on, as it will inevitably be on Apple TV. Uh, Matthew Sutton, I did not watch a James Bond film on James Bond Day, sadly. I know I'm a very... <laughs> It's probably probably not not very uh, good of me, but uh, but th- thank you anyway, Matthew. <laughs> did you? Did you? Uh, did, uh, most people watched a Bond film on James Bond Day, right? Uh... Oh, Dominic Smith, thank you. Uh, most important Bond question of all time: Who has the better robot arm, T or Doctor No? Your fans must know. I'm gonna go for T. He. I think Teehee has the better robot arm. It's funny how in both villains' cases, their uh, mechanical arms are the uh, are their downfalls, really. Uh... Oh, Omar Zambon! Thank you very much. Calvin, rank the Psycho films. Uh, the original, Alfred Hitchcock's, uh, then Psycho 2. Um, then I would probably go Psycho 4, the beginning. Psycho 3. And then the remake. Yeah, I think that's it. And then maybe even below the remake, the uh, Bates Motel, the failed TV pilot. Oh, Mikey, Friday night I watched... Oh, Moonraker and Octopussy. That is a good double bill. Uh, Dalek, hello. Goldeneye, British comedy wizard. Tomorrow Never Dies. Ah, that's great. (laughs) AJ Garrett, I like that. For Calvin, every day is James Bond Day, except James Bond Day. It's quite true. (laughs) Oh, Henry Rixton watched Thunderball on James Bond Day. Excellent. Turning this on just in time for... Ooh, a foil teehee. That's <laughs> just perfect. Great. Oh, thank you, Omar. I'm glad you enjoyed the uh, the ranking. Right. Okay, folks. Let's... I hope that we get an autograph card out of these. Um... Oh, Boris Grishenko. Ah, we have another uh, imposter... Double O, Imposter O. Ooh. Felix Leiter from Quantum of Solace. Very nice. Oh, wait a minute. Ooh. Oh, running out of space. Kareem Dufour. That's a bit annoying. From Moonraker. Very nice. Very nice. Gypsy Dancer. No, I think I'm still going to keep Imposter uh, double O there on <laughs> Scarpine. Excellent. Oh, brilliant. Multicaster Fiber, thank you so much. Uh, Upper Deck has also made a cooperative, co- cooperative James Bond card game, which is fun. I've heard about this, um, and I've been meaning to look into it for a while. Um, even though I will probably just end up playing it by myself. <laughs> Thank you very much, Milty Caster Fiber. Uh, Matthew Sutton. Uh, oh, 50th anniversary rewatch of Live and Let Die. Excellent. Um, that is the one that I need to rewatch this year, actually, because I've, wa- I've watched all of the other anniversary films, except Never Say Never Again, of course. Um, but yeah, I still need to rewatch Live and Let Die. Uh, Ewan McGrath. Uh, Calvin, is there a Bond character you have a tendency to forget exists? Ooh, that's good. That's a very good question. Um, just looking at the posters now. Um, I always forget about the guy, um, what's the name of the bloke in, he's one of Q's assistants in, um, The Man with the Golden Gun, and he was in that episode of Faulty Towers with the hotel inspectors. (laughs) Every time I watch Man with the Golden Gun, I'm like, oh, right, yeah, that guy's in here. James... Carson's cousins, I think his name is. Um, I think he's also he's also in a deleted scene from A Fish Called Wanda. Fun fact. Ah, oh, Zachary Antle, thank you. Don't think people realise if Nolan did a Bond film that Hoyt Van Hoytema, who shot Spectre, his his regular D D uh, director of photography, which I don't like the idea of much. I'm qu- I, I quite agree with you there. <laughs> Zachary, it's, uh, yeah, I mean, that that is one of my main reasons for not particularly being too thrilled about the idea of Nolan doing a Bond film, because I feel like 
we've already sort of seen the kind of Bond film that he would make in Skyfall and Spectre. But a man of geekdom, there's no such thing as late. The night is young, or, you know. Yeah, actually, no, we are just over halfway through the cards, and we haven't had any autographs yet, so we shall see. Oh, Paulo Lachlan, yeah, th those are indeed steelbooks behind me. The, uh, Zavi ones. Um. Right. Next pack. Okay. I see Karim Bay. Alright, let's see what we get here. Oh, nice! Ben Wishaw, Skyfall Q. Excellent. General Moon from Die Another Day. Cool. Ooh, Felix Leiter from Goldfinger. Very good. Oh, nice. Nice one of Natalia there. Oh, very good. Looking, looking very suspicious. Looking like she's just walked into a church and seen... Uh, Body Skrishenko. Oh, I really like that one. Very good. Then we have Gustav Graves. And Karen Bay. There with his cigarette holder. Very good. Okay. I guess the uh, the format of these is that you get how the cards are organized in the pack is that you have two base cards and then two special cards in the middle. Um... Boys with toys. Yes, indeed, mood lamp. Uh. Oh, Ty Marshall got major heat for putting Mr. Stamper in your top five best henchmen list. It's it, it's a bold choice, but we like bold choices when it comes to uh, Bond rankings. This one's a bit difficult. All right, okay. There we go. Ah! <laughs> Mr. Kid. Well, now we just need to get a Mr. Wint, if Mr. Wint is the next card. Oh, no, but Mr. White. What an interesting still they used of him. Sorry, that's <laughs> just... You see that? It's not terribly flattering for Jesper Christensen, but uh, okay. Ooh, James Bond in License to Kill. Now, that is a very good still of Dalton. Oh, and a red card for Kissy Suzuki. Of You Only Live Twice fame. Very good. Carlos from Quantum of Solace. Do we put him on the most obscure character card? I think we do. I think we do. I think Carlos is a less memorable presence than <laughs> Imposter Double O. All right, and Lieutenant Hip. Couldn't they have got a still of him, like, looking towards the camera? <laughs> All right. Uh, oh, Dominic Smith. I mentioned the Fall of Eagles miniseries due to the Kurt Jurgens connection. I totally forgot Charles Gray is in it, too. Oh, excellent. Oh, okay, Fall of Eagles. Making a note of that. Thank you very much, Dominic. Much appreciated. Oh, I forget I can like comments. Oh, that's great. Um, oh, David Kaplan. Uh, speaking of Spectre, have you seen it lately? And has it gone up or down in your ranking? And will you be doing an updated ranking video? I will indeed. Uh, my hope is to have it up uh, as sort of like a Christmas season holiday <laughs> video. Because uh, I did rewatch Spectre not that long ago. Um, and it did change slightly in my ranking, but... Um, not, not much, I'm afraid to say, David. Uh, oh, Ewan McGrath again, thank you very much. What Bond villain should reappear in a new movie? That's interesting, because my... I, I, um, playing the uh, Cypher game, which has some Bond villains reappearing, it's um, it, it's actually quite cool to see, like, Jaws and Alec Trevelyan uh, back. Uh, obviously, most Bond villains die. Oh, unless you mean, like, a rebooted version of a reappearing Bond villain. Uh, thing is, so many Bond villains fall into kind of these archetypes anyway that I don't really know if you need to 
have, like, let's say, Xenia Onotop reappear, or if you could just have a new kind of femme fatale, um, very much like Xenia Onotop, um, but fulfilling that same role, um, I'd be fine with that. Right, I just want to count how many packs we have left, um, seven. Okay, we've got seven packs left. Will we get an autograph card? Uh, we'll see. Uh, let's hope we do. All right. You watch, I'll get autographs and it'll be the same ones as last time. I'll get Albert Moses and Marilyn Goldsworthy. <laughs> All right, okay. General Madrano from Quantum of Solace. Oh, that's a very fetching one of George Lazenby there. Oh, very good still, that, actually. Ooh! A Bond legacy card. Oh, look at that. That's cool. Q from Spectre. It's sort of like a see-through... Huh. Oh, I like that. Very good. Okay, right. Where are we going to put that? Uh, right, there we go. Hmm. Very nice. Like I say, like I really like the variety of the cards here. It's, um... Yeah, very nice. I, I approve. All uh, right, Necross, Living Daylights... And General Orumov from Goldeneye. Oh, I hope I get a Xenia on the top. I really want the whole uh, Goldeneye villain set. Um, Leon, why did it have to be Spectre? I know, yeah, couldn't it have been Skyfall? I still think my favourite card is the foil Charles Grey. As a Brosnan fan, why have we not heard your opinion on Remington Steel? I do actually have the box set. <laughs> the DVD box set. Uh, I do plan on doing... Uh, a video or two on it, but um, as with the the Saint, uh, Roger Moore's The Saint, it's just it's it's always just a little bit daunting when it comes to a TV show because you're sort of like it, it's so you know, and particularly when there are so many episodes, like Remington still went for like five seasons or something. Um, so it's like it's a lot of uh, time to go into it. Not that I would do one video on the entire series, but um, okay, we're getting a oh Sheriff Pepper again. Excellent. If we're going to have any duplicate cards, I'm fine that it's him. Luigi Ferrara from Fiore's Only. Emilio Largo from Thunderball. Very good. Oh, and another um, Bond versus Villains. This one, James Bond versus Red Grant from From Russia With Love. Now, trivia fans, <laughs> uh, of course, this is... Not, actually, a still of Red Grant throttling James Bond. This is a still of Red Grant throttling a Spectre agent with a mask of James Bond. Um, but, you know, we, we, we won't quibble. Um, yeah, it is, isn't it? Because it's from the pre-credits, for the pre-titles. It's not, um, because Bond's in a tuxedo. It's not a still from the train fight, because Bond isn't in a tuxedo on the train fight. Anyway... Sir Robert King. All right. We have a new obscure character lead. Sir Robert King. <laughs> uh, and there we have Zhao from Dine of the Day. Oh, high voltage. Hello, high voltage. Uh, in my opinion, I think all the Brosnan theme songs are average at best compared to the songs of the 80s. What is... What is your lowest point for you with Bond songs? See, I really like all the Brosnan ones. Um, oh, what's the lowest point for me? Um, has to be Another Way to Die. That is the low point for me. I can't abide that song. Um, but I do think it has been done very well by um, covers. I think uh, Cue the Music, who of course have their concert next week in London, um, they do a banging version of that. Um, which really made me appreciate the song in a new way, actually. Um, oh, Jack Hamilton, thank you very much. How would you have felt if Blofeld was the villain of The Spy Who Loved Me as originally planned? I think that would have been quite cool, to be honest. I've got no big love for 
Stromberg. Um, and so I, I think bringing Blofeld back would actually have been quite cool. Um, assuming that he would have died in that film. Um, I think it would have been a nice, like, for film 10 to just, like, wrap up the whole Blofeld thing. Um, I think that would have been really cool. Uh, respectfully, sir, Robert King is more important than Carlos. <laughs> I quite agree with you, Shoulder Shot. He's a more important character, but, um... I would not have ever anticipated getting a card with his face on it. Mm. Oh, Bruce Crawford. Yes, the instrumental version of um, Another Way to Die. Uh, right, okay. Down to our last five, and we haven't got an autograph yet. Well... <laughs> That would be terrible, wouldn't it? Because even when, when I saw, like, on average, two per pa two per uh, box, I was like, uh, ooh, on average, maybe I'll end up with three. Maybe I'll end up with one. Right. All right, a new obscure character. We have Pan Ho from A View to a Kill. I don't even think I knew that that was her name. Ooh, and a very nice image of James Bond, Pierce Brosnan in The World Is Not Enough there. Ernst Stavro Blofeld. Uh, from Spectre, on black there. Ooh! A shiny James Bond from uh, Thunderball. Lovely shirt, that. Oh my god, we, what, we have the same bloody card again! Except one's shiny and one isn't. Are they numbered differently? No, they're still both numbered 58. Okay, I guess they just have some foil varieties? I don't think I've had another foil one like that, though. Hmm. All right. And we have to he again. Very good. Oh, sorry, missed some comments there. Uh, oh, James Atkinson. Thank you so much. Did you know Phoebe Waller-Bridge wrote the Cuba sequence and Paloma character in No uh, No Time to Die? Yeah. Um, she said a lot of her other ideas were rejected for being too camp. I probably would have quite enjoyed those ideas, because that Cuba sequence is my favourite part of the whole film. I love that Cuba sequence. Um, I don't know if I'd ever had any official confirmation on the fact that she'd written that bit. So thanks for sharing that, James. That's pretty cool. Uh... Robert Wiling, uh, if there was a Spider-Verse type Bond movie, which pre-reboot Bond actor, you can only pick one, would you want to meet Craig Bond? Roger Moore. Easily Roger Moore. Like, those two teaming up for an adventure would be something else. <laughs> Did you know Pan Ho Mayday's assistant was... The Miso Horny Girl from Full Metal Jacket. I did not know that. Oh, thanks for sharing that, James. That's cool. I, I need to rewatch Full Metal Jacket. I haven't seen it in years. Um, what a coincidence, quite, Leon. Quite. Calvin, which George Lazenby film is your favourite? <laughs> uh, good question, Leon. <laughs> I've only seen two, and uh, it's definitely Majesty's is definitely my favourite. <laughs> Hmm. Right. Final four packs here, folks. Maybe we'll end this with a bang and, you know, there'll be a couple of autographs in here, but... Oh, I see Magda. Oh, <laughs> Eric Kriegler. Excellent. Sir Hugo Drax. Oh, I'm very pleased with that. That is... Nice. Oh! Oh! <laughs> oh, is this one of the gold acetate things? Have I really got Agent Fields as one of the gold acetate cards? Oh, what's that? Do I scratch that off? What is it? Well, it's a nice card. <laughs> it's actually a very nice still of... Uh... God, what's her name? Gemma Atkinson? Gemma 
Anderton? God, it, it, my mind's really gone a blank there, but, um, okay, well, that's going to be one of the rarer cards, I guess. Um, right, let me move some around. And we have another Bond versus the Villains, which, uh, we're going in order here, which is kind of strange. We started with Doctor No, we had From Rush With Love, and now we've got Goldfinger. Um, but that's, oh, that's actually a really nice one. I really like that still. I don't know if I'd seen that before. That's really cool. And then we have <laughs> Miss Penelope Smallbone. Um, oh, brilliant. Brilliant. I love that Miss Penelope Smallbone has a card. And Magda. Lovely, lovely Magda. That is hilarious. That's brilliant. <laughs> uh... Oh, Ewan McGrath. Uh, Calvin, do you who do you think Bond should have been rebooted with Craig, or would you have liked Bond keeping its original continuity? What option would you like to see for possible new Bond films? Um, it'd be interesting, I think, if they just went back and, you know, we had the Bond who was married to Tracy, and uh, they just sort of carried on with that previous loose continuity. I don't think they're going to do that. I think we're just going to get something new. Um, for it, regarding what they did with Craig... I'm fine with it existing as its own continuity, particularly with how No Time to Die ended. Like, if Craig's Bond had been in continuity with all of the others and No Time to Die was how, like, they all, that character just in general met his fate, I would have been even more disappointed with it, I think. Um, Dominic Smith, the tropes and Bond formula are there for a reason, but sometimes it's great to mix things up. Do you think a genuinely sympathetic, non-evil main Bond villain could work? Well, that's an interesting thought. Um, you mean in sort of, sort of like a more sort of morally grey sense? Or like someone who genuinely thinks they're doing the world some good? Because that could be quite interesting. Um, interesting to put Bond in a more moral dilemma, perhaps, because uh, you know, most Bond villains are just kind of like downright evil. That's a really interesting idea, Dominic. Mikey Sorrentino. Thank you so much, Mikey. Uh, if you were to put Blofeld in the Brosnan era... Oh, which film would you put him in? Um, ooh. Blofeld is tricky to slot into the Brosnan era, actually. Um, hmm. I guess he could... I, I, You know, maybe in Tomorrow Never Dies, like, and replace General Chang with Blofeld, so that um, Carver has his whole media empire thing going on, but Blofeld is the one sort of trying to orchestrate the bigger, um, you know, thing. Which is basically what General Chang is trying to do when he's trying to, like, take over the government, which feels like it's a far more pressing thing than Carver's, uh, you know, satellites and uh, getting broadca broadcasting rights in China for the next 100 years, but never mind. Uh... Right. MCU, etc. means we're in heavy continuity days. I think you might be right with that, James. Okay, final three packs. <laughs> I'm genuinely getting quite nervous now. Oh, I see Desmond Llewellyn's lovely face. Come on. There we go. Oh my god. Okay, we have a new... Obscure character, Char, from The Man with the Golden Gun. Craig Mitchell from Quantum of Solace. He would have been a contender for this had Char not appeared. Uh, this is quite good, though. I feel like I'm learning a load of characters' names that I had no idea. I just didn't expect them to have names. Ooh, Felix Leiter from Doctor No there. Lovely stuff. Sean Holt has a good feeling about this one. I am hoping you're right, Sean. <laughs> no, not this one, I guess. But still, that's quite a nice one of Miss Moneypenny from License to Kill. Ah, uh, and we have Damien Falco from Dying of the Day. And Q from The World is Not Enough. That's a really nice one. Good old Desmond. Um, right. Okay. 
we have two packs left. I thought we were going to be getting two autograph cards. Uh, have I just missed them? Are they on the backs or something? I don't think they are. Well, here goes. I mean, this is like a sure, like, if, if I open this and there's no autograph card in it, then, boy, we've just... We've just not been any in this pack, then. Oh, I see Patrick McNee from A View to a Kill. Right, okay. Professor Joe Butcher from License to Kill. Excellent. Uh, okay. Chang from Moonraker with an excellent image there. That's Is that just before he gets chucked out of the... Um, the tower. Okay, we have General Olaf <laughs> from Octopussy. Alright, if this next one isn't an autograph card... <gasps> it is an autograph card! Oh my god! I'd given up hope! Oh my god, it's Mariam Darbo! Kara Milovi! I think this is a... This is the, um... The autograph, one of the autograph inscription cards, because she's written her character's name. Oh my god, that's so cool! Oh my god, I I had given up hope then. I did not expect this. Oh my god, that is so cool. I'm right, just gonna have a look through the. <laughs> oh my god, Agent 009 from Octopussy. Right, sorry, new obscure favorite. Answer, Godfrey Tibbet. Very fine, still there. But my god. That is very cool. That is so nice. Congratulations, you have received a trading card autographed by Mariam Darbo. This trading card was signed in the presence of a company representative or sent from and certified as to its authenticity by Mariam Darbo. Enjoy your autograph card. I will do. Oh, that's really nice. Lovely stuff. Alright, okay. I'm gonna... Ah, where do I put her? You know what, I can put her there for now. Oh, very good. Kara did the Bond Girls Are Forever documentary. Uh, yes, she did, actually. You can still see that on, um, I think it was on the um, deluxe version of Casino Royale on Blu-ray. They included an updated version of the documentary there. It's a shame that they didn't keep on doing it. I think they only updated it as far as um, Casino Royale. Um... Oof, right. Okay. Will there be an autograph in here, then? Because they, uh, it said on average two a box, and I don't... Oh, I see Professor Dent. If it literally is the final two packs, it's going to look like I've fixed this, and I swear to you, I... Ewan McGrath, Calvin, good point. I don't think there has been a Bond villain who is sympathetic, and you can see where they're coming from. Is there one? I don't know if there is. I don't think that there is, you know. I think they all are just pure evil. Um... Oh, Leon. Electra King is sort of sympathetic. I actually agree with that, Leon. Particularly when it comes to the ambiguity of, like, who... <laughs> Sorry, I just saw it. Okay, it's Bambi. <laughs> Another great obscure one, but I still think Agent 009 is obscurer. Um... Oh, Gareth Mallory from Skyfall. Very nice still there. James Bond from From Russia With Love. Right, do we have another autograph card? We actually do! Oh my goodness! I was not expecting that. That's Mary Staven, isn't it? One of the Octopussy Girls. Yeah, Mary Staven. I swear I didn't plan it this way. <laughs> I was genuinely really nervous. I thought I was just going to end this without any autograph cards, but... Oh, that's really cool. Mary Staven. Octopussy girl. Very nice. She's got a lovely signature there, actually. Whew. Okay. I'm <laughs> breathing a sigh of relief now. Dr. Metz. Dr. Metz has a trading card. Oh, my. All right. Obscure character. 
And then we have Professor Dent. Very good. And that's it, folks. Wow. Okay, that was pretty cool towards the end there. Um, shoulder shot, she might also cover the obscure character slot. <laughs> I quite agree. Like, who do we have in the obscure characters? We have Dr. Metz, we have Agent 009, Char, Pan Ho, Sir Robert King, Carlos, Imposter 00 twice, and Cider. Very good. I still don't know. who Who is the most obscure of these, do you think? I think I would probably go with Char as the most obscure. Oh, Daffred Brooks, thank you so much. Did you check out my links on your Patreon member? I still need to do that. I'm so sorry, Daffred, because you do mention this in, in live streams, and I, I need to actually, like, look into, like, where these are kept on Patreon, because I don't get any notifications about them. Um, but I will do, I promise you, I have days off coming up, and I will do that. Because I think Patreon's changed a bit recently as well. Um, changed its layout, which is, um, yeah. Um. Okay, well. That was a pretty good haul. Dare I say. Um, I actually do just want to find all of the James Bond cards. Um, okay, that one is shiny. Um, because I like how the James Bond cards... You know, they're, they're in these little boxes um, compared to the other characters. But I think I was just putting them um, in here. Uh, ah, there we go. Yeah, all right. We've got Connery, Brosnan. More. More. All right. All right. Brosnan. I just want to have all the bonds in one place. Okay, cool. Alright, so that's all of our base cards. And then we have the uh, James Bond ones. Um, I'm going to have to find a, a better uh, breakdown of these because there's some, obviously, like the shiny ones and then there's some of these sort of more grey background ones and then some black background ones which look Damn cool. That is a really nice one of Roger. That is lovely. Um, I'm going to put all the darker ones together. Did we not get a Daniel Craig? I don't think we got a Daniel Craig in this. We got every Bond except for Daniel Craig. Craig hate is real, folks. And then these ones were very nice. Kissy Suzuki, Natalia, Kareen, M, all Bond girls, and M and Moneypenny. But Natalia is my favourite of those. These ones are quite cool. I like that I've got, you know, the the Connery trilogy. Oh, Jamie Lynch, thank you so much. I saw Golden Gun recently and noticed for the first time there's a real dog sitting on the deck of Scaramanga's junk boat. I don't know if I've noticed that. All right. Checking that out. Thank you very much for that heads up. Oh, Daffid, sorry I posted a bit too much. No, you definitely didn't, Daffid. I just need to actually, like, figure out how to work the website. Um, so, no, it's it, 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 it's my bad. Oh, Hossi Trent. Hello. Nice to see you. Those black gun barrel ones are very nice. I quite agree. They are very nice. Um, and then what do we have next? We have these... Ah, right, is this the distinction? Like, the villains are on the... B oh, no, not villains. Because there's some allies in here as well. Is it just men have the black backgrounds and then women have the red ones? Is that the distinction here? Um, Some of these are quite nice. General Orlov, Felix, Hugo Drax, Love, Blofeld, Largo, Felix, Felix, Felix! M, Bill, Le Chiffre, Q... Zorin. Very good. Then these Q branch cards are really nice. So we've got the Ski Pole Rocket Launcher and the Glass Shattering Ring. If you're the kind of person who wants to collect all of these, like, it must be a, a real 
pain because like I've just opened up an entire box here and I don't feel like I've yeah I mean like look look like of these Q branch cards this one is like QB10 this one is QB2 so there's at least 10 of these and I only got two in a whole box so all right and then we've got some shinies you have Teehee and Damian Falco very nice but ladies and gentlemen I think this is, aside from the autographs, <laughs> potentially my favourite card of the whole pack. I feel like I need to get this in a tiny little frame and <laughs> just have it in my background somewhere. This is really nice. Ah, oh, love it. And then, yeah, an odd Agent Fields on gold acetate, I guess. How many of these are there? This can't be 191. There can't be like uh, over 100, of the, nearly 200 of these, surely. Yeah. There's a good still. And then this very nice one of Q, Ben Wishaw. From Spectre. I like that one quite a lot. It's really nice. And then, of course, the stars of the show. Mariam Darbo and Mary Staven. These are very nice. I am very pleased with uh, Mariam Darbo in particular. That is a really nice one to have. Cool. Yeah, very nice. Very nice indeed. I just want to have a look and see what the odds are on these, if they're actually... Oh no, yeah, no, some of the more... Dare I use the word common? <laughs> uh, yeah, in, in both instances. But it was cool to get the um, autograph inscription one, where Mariam Darbo has written the <clears throat> her character's name. That's cool. Very nice. Uh... Oh, Dominic Smith, thank you very much. Uh, excluding Tracy and Vespa, if you could pick one Bond girl from the series who Bond would have stayed with and be worked into later movies, who would it be? Natalia. 100% Natalia. I think that um, it's a slight uh, disappointment that she... Well, in a way it's a disappointment, in a way it isn't, because I think that if she had been in the Terry Hatcher role in Tomorrow Never Dies, that would have been really cool and... Um, you know, it would have been a nice bit of continuity. On the other hand, if she were killed off in such a manner, I know I would be fairly upset with that. She's one of my favourite Bond girls. Um, but Bond and Natalia, I think that her and Brosnan have the best chemistry of any Brosnan and his female co-stars. Um, and I like how they end up. Like, I like them, you know, making out in the field and then Wade's men appear and then, you know, he carries her off. Like, I, I think it's a, a really nice ending. I feel like they have a genuine, warm connection, um, which is nice. James Atkinson. Uh, thank you very much, James. Do you find it interesting that the Craig films seem to be liked more by the general audience than the hardcore Bond fans? No Time to Die got an 83%... Did it really get 83% on Rotten Tomatoes? That seems... pretty high. I do find it interesting, actually, and, you know, it's one of the reasons why I can't grumble about his tenure too much, because it is, you know, it's like, okay, well, you know, he kept it popular, which is, you know, good when, you know, the films are so, you know, the gaps in between them are so big, and it doesn't feel like they're really doing enough to sort of cultivate a young Bond fan <laughs> um, uh, generation anymore, really, which is... Uh, concerning because myself and a lot of other people that I know who are big Bond fans tend to come to Bond when, you know, they're in their youth. Um, and uh, they don't seem to be, like, bothered about that anymore, which is a shame. Uh, oh, Tom Mason. Calvin, give me a shout-out if you end up doing something on Peter Hunt's editing. I've been working on an article about his star recently. Oh, that's cool. Oh. May well hit you up about that, Tom. Thank you for that. Um, 
No Time to Die is hands down the biggest mixed bag Bond film in my opinion. Well, I quite agree with you there, Christian. <laughs> It's like there's some things in it, like the whole Cuba sequence is probably my favourite sequence in all of Craig's Bond, to be honest. Like, I love that whole, the Spectre party, the eye around on the pillow, like, all of that I think is so much fun. Um, but then the, the final act is just, as soon as it gets to, like, Safin's Island, it just goes off a cliff for me. It's, um, yeah. Um... Anyway, who had a fun James Bond day? <laughs> uh, what did we get? We got a trailer for uh, the upcoming <clears throat> Road to a Million, uh, which looks interesting. Um, I'll be watching it for sure, but I'm not expect. I'm, I'm definitely. I don't think I'll be doing like a video on it every week or anything like that. I think it it it, it will be a game show with a James Bond flourish. Um, so I'm sure that they'll probably jump off the Golden Eye Dam. They'll, um, you know, I think in the trailer you see them with, the, like, a crane, so they're going to climb that, like, in Casino Royale. I think they're going to do, like, do stunts from Bond films, and then maybe they'll have to answer a trivia question here or there. But I am interested to see how Brian Cox plays into things. Like, what is his role <laughs> in, in this? It feels very strange. Um, what else did we get on James Bond Day? You could pay £100 for a book on the 007 store. Uh, and that was about it, really, wasn't it? Um, uh, oh, George Cummings, I think, from Russia With Love is the best Bond movie with Skyfall as well. Oh, cool. I did watch From Russia With Love not that long ago, and I actually enjoyed it more than I had done in some time, um, which was nice. Uh, oh yes, Hossie, yes, the, um, the odd job, uh, hat, uh, they announced that, you can get that as a prop replica, which, um, though I am, I am a fan of a prop replica, as you can see by the golden eye satellite behind me, and the golden gun, <laughs> I do like my prop replicas, but I don't know if I'll be going in for the odd job hat, sadly. Yes, Neil, still no 4K releases, which is very disappointing, um... If anything, I like that is my number one like most desired Bond thing, like a 4K set, uh, and I'm surprised that they're still dragging their feet on it. To be perfectly honest, I just I think that Amazon must be some kind of factor in because they they put them all up on Prime again now, and then it's like oh yes, all the Bond films are on Prime and and all this, and it's like well yeah, but they're also just on my shelf, so I would rather I would rather just have them on my shelf where I could access them whenever I wanted, rather than, you know, wait for them to come up on streaming. But, anyway. Ooh, David Platzer. Favourite level on Cypher 007. It has to be the Little Nelly um, level, right? It's so much fun. I love that level. Um... Oh, Dutch Bond fans here. Hello, Yeroon. Nice to see from you. Uh, not much else indeed, but hey, you can always buy an overpriced teddy bear on the 007 gift shop. <laughs> Quite. Um... <laughs> yeah, those teddy bears were random, weren't they? It was the Doctor No teddy bear. Like, fair, I, I kind of understand doing a James Bond teddy bear with the tuxedo and everything, but when you're in, like, a Nehru jacket teddy bear territory, that's, that's like a... Oh, really? <laughs> oh, Triton, K175, how's the World Is Not Enough review coming along? Well, I'm actually, because I've got a few days off this week, so I'm actually hoping to break ground on it soon. The next, like, big in-depth review you'll see from me will be on Agent Under Fire, um, which I feel like I've had that in the works for so long, but it's just like, you know, it, it, much like the Nightfire one, it'll be quite long. Um, I'm gonna go very much into depth with it, uh, and, uh, yeah, I'm, that, that'll be the next one, and then, um, ranking every major, every main Bond villain, then working on the, well, there's not enough, and then also just on the whole film ranking, um, so, th those are the next, like, four big ones, uh, and I'm hoping to make headway with all of them this week, uh, yes, we shall see. 
Ooh, James Atkinson, would you be interested in doing a video on the proposed Jinx spin-offs as a tie-in to Dine of the Day when you get to that? I would, actually. Um, is that script available anywhere? I bet Tom Mason knows. Because Tom, Tom Mason's a genius for finding, like, scripts and deleted footage and all that kind of stuff. Um, so, Tom, let, let me know if you have the Jinx script. Uh, oh, Matthew Sutton, thank you very much. Any plans to do a live playthrough of any of the Bond games? I will indeed be doing a live playthrough of um, Agent Under Fire uh, shortly after that review video goes up. Um, that's going to be the next one. And then after that, probably Everything or Nothing will be the one that I work on next, I suppose. Um, but there's just a lot that, you know, it, it, they're very big. If, if a video's over like an hour long, it's, uh, you know... It's a big undertaking. So, yeah. Oh, which movies would you like to see created, recreated in Cypher 007? Moonraker. <laughs> I think a Moonraker one on that could be a lot of fun if you're, like, floating in space with the Moonraker laser. Like, that could be really fun. Um, yeah, Moonraker I would really love. Um, I'm not that bothered about Craig or um, Brosnan recreations, to be perfectly honest, though... It wouldn't surprise me if they did do Goldeneye. They certainly hinted at Alec Trevelyan making a reappearance, so that wouldn't surprise me. Uh, but I don't feel like I need it. I don't feel like I need another Goldeneye video game adaptation. <laughs> After all, you know, getting a new one pretty much every decade. Uh, Dominic Smith, thank you very much. If you had to cosplay as a non-Bond character from the films, who would you pick based on how fabulous the clothes they were, they were wearing in the film? That's a good question. Anything with an Aru jacket, like look look at this. Like Hugo Drax, Charles Gray Blofeld. I would love me some of that. But I am actually just gonna have a quick flick through these to see if there are any that really stand out. Oh, well I could go as Agent 009. It's just a lot of suits, really, isn't it? I could maybe go as Sheriff J.W. Pepper. Uh, I still can't get over that image of Mr. White. That's... Of all the stills you have of Mr. White, you picked that one? <laughs> really? Oh, Mr. Kid, we didn't get Mr. Wint. Oh, that's disappointing. Um, I was going to say Ben Wishore is Q, but that's just how I dress normally anyway. Um... Okay, no, I think it is, yeah, it's going to have to be, like, Drax or Blofeld. Like, something with an Aru jacket. I've never worn an Aru jacket. Uh... Ooh, Tom Mason. Okay, a Jinx script leaked online in 2021, but haven't been able to confirm. It's genuine. Interesting. We're going to have to rush um, Neil Purvis and Robert Wade at a talk or something and say, Did you write this? It's the only way we'll find out. Um, okay, folks. Uh, I think that is it from me tonight. Thank you very much for joining for this uh, unboxing, which was actually uh, quite good, <laughs> I think. Like, lots of variety here. I'm kind of... I'm quite pleased with this. And, of course, we had these two autographs, which are rather lovely. Um, but Mariam Darbo, like, that is, to get, like, a main star autograph is, um, quite spectacular. I'm very pleased with that. Oh, Daffred Brooks, thank you very much again. Watch Police Story 3 because of the Waylon spin-off. I do need to see more of, um, Michelle Yeoh's, uh, martial arts output. That's for sure. <laughs> Uh, Alright, folks. Uh, well, stay tuned for uh, what comes next. I think the next live stream I do will be a video game playthrough. Uh, then maybe we'll do another Q&A before the end of the year. I don't know. Um, and maybe we'll do another card unboxing in future. Because this is quite fun. And I quite enjoy autograph hunting. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, Christian. Thank you, Heatseeker. Matthew. Sweet distraction for an hour or two. Thank you for being here for this sweet distraction of an hour or two. All right. Take care, folks. See ya.